Good morning and welcome or welcome back to TEDx Pinecrest School. This is our sixth annual TEDx Pinecrest School event. The theme of this whole event has been seeing is believing. This segment, since it's the second segment, maybe you can ask yourself, when you see, do you automatically believe? Does seeing equal believing? Our first speaker, Brent Plattner, might just test whether or not you believe what you see. Brent Plattner will be talking about the magic of magic. All righty, all right. So, <laughs> wow, all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's clear the air here. Oh, star. <laughs> no, it's, it's Ted, there's just red figments everywhere. Uh, let's, uh, let's get rid of that really quick. All right. <laughs> No, we, we can take another one out over here. Uh, that's just a little bit of sleight of hand. We'll try it with uh, a little bit of water here. That's enough. <laughs> Make it disappear, right? Now, <laughs> in a room like this, South Florida, the humidity might be uh, just right to go right there and pour it out of the hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And then we'll put this away, and uh, how about we do like a, like a card trick now? How does that sound? Very good. Awesome. So I need a volunteer for that. So someone raise their hand. How about Mora right here? How about, clap it up for Mora. Awesome. So we have a deck of cards here, 52 individual cards. We'll have um, Mora here. Do me a favor. Choose any card. <laughs> Choose any card. Okay, this one. Perfect. Take it out. Look at it. Memorize it. <laughs> no, we both do it, right? It's not a problem. <laughs> so look at it. Show it to everybody. Actually, show it to that camera right there, and they'll show it to you, okay? Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, now put it back wherever you'd like. I will try to find it, okay? No, I'm just kidding. All right, choose, <laughs> choose any card. Okay. Okay? Uh, look at it. Show it to that camera, I'll look away, make sure. Nothing. Yeah, show it to that camera, make sure everybody can see it. Got it? Okay. You got it? We're good? All right. Don't let me see it. Tell me when to stop somewhere. Okay, stop. Perfect. Put it right there. Go into the middle of that. Clap it up for more. <laughs> no, you can stay, you can stay, you can stay. Yeah. So as a magician, I have to move my mouth while moving my hands, right? So hand is quicker than the eye. You saw me put the card into the middle of the deck, but as I was talking, I misdirected everybody. The card popped to the top. Was that it? No. Oh, I guess why that's this is TEDx and not TED, right? Um, okay. No, we have the uh, the King of Diamonds. So you you I told you that I use my mouth, right? Yeah. So I actually like to do something a little little interesting here. Uh, what? No. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Um, huh? No. Hmm. Um, hmm. Mm. Hmm? No. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. One folded up here. Was that it? <laughs> Thank you. Clap it up for more. I give a hug. I give a hug. All right. Have a seat. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to share with you uh, one more. This is, uh, this is known as one of the oldest tricks in magic. It uses a, uh, a magic wand here. If someone would like, would someone like to inspect the magic wand? Anyone raise a hand? Here, Evan, you can take it and check it out. Make sure it's legit. How is it? It's good? Perfect. No trap doors, hidden elephants, anything like that. All right, okay. And then we also use three silver cups and three... Fuzzy red balls, would anyone like to inspect these or do you guys believe these? They're thin, you'd like to check them out? Okay, okay. Check them out, make sure they're legit. Perfect, now everyone is relying on you to say that they're legit. Are they legit? 
They're legit. Okay. <laughs> so this is the cups and balls. This was used by ancient Egyptians. It is one of, if not the oldest, magic tricks in the book. And what ancient magicians would do is they would use sleight of hand to pilfer food from their wealthy emperors, right? So we take each ball, right? And uh, if we do everything just right, oh, nothing happens yet, right? Uh, what's a magic word we can say? Someone shout out a magic word. Wow, I didn't think of that one. Abracadabra. <laughs> there we go. And um, now we'll take this last one right here. And uh, we'll just give it one little shake and disappear. And what those poor servants would do is when they got home, they'd bring cups to their family and the balls would reappear underneath the three cups. There you go. So <laughs> ball one goes here, ball two here, and ball three right there. Now we have cup A, B, and C. Someone raise their hand. They're going to choose a cup. Someone raise their hand here. Here, Matthew, which cup would you like, A, B, or C? You can choose A, B, or C. Which one would you like? A, you sure? And I did not influence your choice at all. <laughs> no, no, really, you can choose A, B, or C. Which one would you like? B, okay, B for Brent's, I guess, right? So <laughs> we'll take the cup ball from cup B, now choose a cup, A or C? C. C, so we take the ball from cup B, on the tip of the wand it disappears and reappears underneath cup C. There you go. <laughs> now, the cynics in the audience might have said, what if he had chosen cup A? Well, the ball, just the same, would have gone on the tip of the wand and reappeared underneath cup A. <laughs> so I know this trick can get a bit monotonous and a bit hard to follow, so I'll make it a bit easier and take away the three balls. We'll actually leave it so it's just a three-cup trick. Okay. And, oh, well, there's another one right there, right? <laughs> well, um, we'll take that one away. Now, the, I'll, I'll fill you guys in on a little secret. When I am going like that, I'm actually, believe it or not, keeping it in my hand right here. I'm secretly concealing it. And so I'm false transferring it to put it away. And so as I'm revealing it, um, I'm actually trying to fill you guys in on it. So I'll let you see that I'm putting this ball into my pocket for the last time. Now, someone raised their hand. I need a volunteer just to shout out a number. Someone, someone shout out a number. 14, okay, 14. So I was actually gonna ask how many balls do you think are underneath the cup, so that might not be the best estimate. So someone raise their hand. Johnny, right here, how many balls are underneath this cup? Three? No, there's only, there's only one, unfortunately, right? Um, but we'll take this ball, and I'll let you see one more time here. Someone catch, right? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, no, we'll keep it in the pocket, right? Johnny, how many balls are underneath this cup? Two, unfortunately incorrect again, it is one. We'll take this ball and we'll put it away into the pocket now. Johnny, I'll give you one more chance. How many balls underneath this cup? One. Let's give a hand to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So finally we'll take this ball, we'll put it away. Now I have to ask, now anyone can shout this one out. How many balls are underneath this cup? Zero. Zero? So I would think zero as well. Some might have said one. They, if they had said one, they would have been correct, but it would have been a, uh, an orange, right? <laughs> right, um, that's one orange, right? Not one orange, but two, not two, but three. Not three, but four. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's the oldest trick in magic. <laughs> okay, so. Magic. <laughs> There's no better way to iterate the idea of seeing is believing than through magic. Those who are cynical may say magic is a big lie, but I think magic is just the best form of storytelling. Through the impossibility of the illusion, the magician is able to connect with the audience on another level not corralled by the boundaries of reality. As a magician, connecting with an audience comes first, sleight of hand comes second. With this card, for instance, the illusion is not in the actual sleight of hand, but in the actions leading up to the sleight of the hand. I have to truly believe that I'm plucking a card from mid-air if I want to sell you on the same idea. First, I look to the air next to me, which automatically brings your eyes to the same place. I've already preconditioned you to the story that there's something visible in the air next to me. 
So subconsciously, when I pull the card out of the air, you're just thinking, that came from the air, not from his hand. This idea can be applied not only to magic, but to anything someone does. They have to believe in the story they're trying to tell, whether it be when presenting something, at an interview, or in simple conversation. Last year, I traveled to South Africa to learn about their society, teach basketball, and perform magic. It was fascinating. At each school that I performed, I had to explain that I was doing tricks, not actual magic, because they held a strong belief in the powers of voodoo. I had to change the story for a different audience. Even with that statement before, I had an adult from the school, not one of the students, actually come up to me after the show and ask, wait, so I understand that they're tricks, but where do you learn the real magic from? The original story he had written in his mind ultimately stuck with him, causing him to think that I had real magic powers, which may or may not be true. <laughs> <laughs> Although it might not be about the existence of magic, we all tell ourselves different stories. In today's world of polarization, information, and misinformation, it's important to step back in introspection and ask yourself, what story am I telling myself every day? I challenge you to consider not only your stories, but also the ones told by those around you, and to reevaluate what perspectives are shaping your thoughts. As you think about that, I'll leave you with one last trick. It's one of my favorites. And I will need a volunteer for it. So let's see, let's see. We'll go right here. Clap it up. And what's your name? Shout it out loud. Uh, I'm Jaden. Jaden, clap it up for Jaden. All right, so Jaden, I'm going to need you to be very perceptive here. You can stand right here, actually. That'd be perfect. So we have two coins. This is called the two coin trick. It uses a copper English penny and a silver American half dollar. Okay, it's the two coin trick. Okay. So if we put into the hand the silver and the copper, but we take the silver out and we put it into my breast pocket here, which coin is left? I would say the copper. The copper, exactly, and the silver. So this is what we call a two-coin <laughs> trick, right? So there is a copper coin and a silver coin, right? So this time, we'll try it again, right? This time, we'll take out the copper coin and put it into the pocket. Now, which coin is left? Both. Both, theoretically, you would say the silver, but it is a two-coin trick. So both are left in the hand. So Jaden, we'll do this one more time, and this time we'll let an audience member guess, right? So we have the copper and we have the silver, right? If we put the silver into my hand, shout it out, which one is left? Both? You guys are starting to get it. It's a two-coin trick, right? <laughs> so there's a silver and a copper. I'll give you guys one last chance. You guys can all shout it out at the same time, right? So if we take one out, the copper, right? We put it into the hand. Shout it out. How many coins are left? Too, right, so that's the story you guys have been telling yourselves, but the story that I'm telling you is that there's nothing. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>